Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Tank Show, where we come together once a week to spend time acquiring new knowledge and all things regarded to the aquarium hobby. As always, I have my buddy, pal, and co-host, Shadow Ed, here with me, and thanks for joining us. And we have a special guest tonight, Lefty 3213A. Lefty, thank you for being here as well. Thank you for having me. Uh, my apologies to everyone. I am a bit under the weather, so it sound a bit funny and have a couple of sniffles in the mic, but we'll try to avoid all that. Uh, before we get too far into it, for anybody that isn't aware, if you'll put at Fish Room Fever, that's right, throw the at symbol in front of it uh, before your questions or comments, uh, we'll be happy to answer those because that is what we are here for. Um, I see we've got UPS or Living the Dream has re-upped her membership. Welcome back and thank you for rejoining the Fish Room Fever family. Very much appreciate it. Hope you're doing well. Hopefully the weather hasn't been too rough on you out there delivering those packages recently. Uh, but we are going to jump into the chat. I see some people saying hellos and asking some questions. But first off, uh, I've got to got to mention something that we were talking about right before the stream started left because I think you're a lunatic. Uh, <laughs> but for anybody that's not familiar with it, you have decided to do a video a day for the year of 2022. Um, yeah. Tell us where you came up with this crazy idea and how that's going for you so far. I think it was either last year or the year before when things shut down. There was some drag queen on Instagram was like 365 days of drag. So I was like, well, let's do 365 days of fish keeping. And that's how it all started. So far, it's going good. I've been able to get, you know, a week's worth of videos done in a day. So if I keep that pace up, it's going to be a fun year. Absolutely. Well, and I would dare say that the, uh, the snow days uh help a little bit with that having a little bit of time for work to yeah maybe get yeah. some extra stuff set up in advance <laughs> definitely helped this week so do you have anything in particular uh, for anybody that hasn't been keeping up with those uh, that you're focusing on for these videos or is it a variety of topics it's you know it's mostly fish species profiles we're doing some fish food review talks and then you know different equipments and chemicals stuff like that anything fish keeping related very, very nice. Well, I definitely do recommend anybody that hasn't checked it out. Go check out Lift 3213A. Uh, a lot of content coming up from him, uh, not just previously, but especially this year with the video every single day. It's going to be crazy. Uh, and I wish you the best of luck, my friend, on that, uh, bringing out the awesome, awesome content. So I think it's super on. cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I know you've been doing a whole lot of videos, a lot of shorts and things. How's that going for you on your channel? Oh, man, I've had a blast doing uh, the shorts a day, one short a day. Um, I don't know if I really know how to get into the mainstream alpha rhythm, but I can get in there for about two hours every day. So I hit about 900 to 1200 with a lot of my videos lately. Wow. Yeah, and nice. uh, it's been a lot of fun. I've picked up, uh, I think last time I checked in the last month, 98 subs from it. That's so, wow. That's yeah. impressive. I'm just going to keep doing it and having fun. And it's video that I have been shooting for like the last two years that I can't use because it's just like little bitty bits of stuff. Right. But it's like I got hundreds of videos. <laughs> so, yeah, that's what I've been doing. I figured out how to be able to narrow it to the up and down version instead of the nice long version. And uh, it's been a lot of fun and I'm enjoying it quite a bit. That's all that matters, as long as you're having fun. We've been enjoying seeing what you've been coming out with lately, buddy. Uh, ben Backstrom saying hello to James Ed and everyone in the chat. Uh, thank you, Zinjinger, for posting the links. And Redul as well. New local Austin saying, I got fish room fever. Woohoo! Got another yeah. fever to go with it, but I got fish room <laughs> fever. Just, yeah. There we go. He's got the fish room quarantine right now. <laughs> yeah. Jimmy P's Aquariums. Hashtag Lisa sent me. I very much appreciate it. Always a huge thank you to Katie Trump. It's worth a send over. I do appreciate them for that. Um, also, Jimmy P said hello to us. Thank you for the audio video check there. So roll on through and catch the highlighted things. Uh, All did the have, things. You had a question about polka dot pis, pictus catfish if they were a schooling fish. I believe April okay. said that. I'm assuming that's just a regular Pictus catfish and polka dot was put in the front of it. Hmm. Um, I've never heard them called that before. I've not either, but you know, you never know in this hobby. We do a lot of uh, name changing 
uh, especially in stores and when selling things to kind of freshen up the uh, the branding of different fish to make them more attractive to people that are looking to buy. Um, and lots of hybrids. Yeah, so, there, are, there are a lot of hybrids. Honestly, I would have to look into them. Uh, I don't know of, well, like you bet your quarry cats, so you typically, you know, you want to do a minimum of six in my experience and opinion. Uh, but other than the Corridoris, uh, a lot of them are not necessarily schooling cats. You will kind of see them grouped together uh, with some of your Pictus. Um, I feel like it's more for familiarity and, and, and a sense of security than requiring a school. Um, but I'd have to look into that particular one to give you 100% answer. Uh, I think you would be fine to have fellow Pictus in with it. They typically tend to enjoy it for the Pictus that I am familiar with, uh, but I don't know that it's one uh, like a Cory cat where it, they really tend to stress out a lot if it is just one in a tank or two in a tank. But I would have to, to double check exactly what the point about Pictus is. Um, you've got, like, for example, my web bishers bikers with shears however you want to pronounce it um those fish you find solo and that's i'm actually looking over here at them but uh, i know that all the ones i've had they do tend to kind of hang out together when i have multiples in a tank you'll see that they all kind of uh, sit in a bunch of you know snake looking ball if you will and just hang out <laughs> but it's not a fish that needs others with it to school with uh, but they do enjoy each other's company so that's always good nice they're not trying to eat each other <laughs> it's always a plus yes absolutely <laughs> aqua designs by mlt said hello to ed lefty and myself always good to see you steven p2003 aquatics says ed's beard's looking particularly fluffy oh, oh now that you mention it i probably need to trim it down a little <laughs> it, i need to do some maintenance on the beard i thought it, that thought that's why he went off camera right before we started was to get the beard a good fluff you get a little comb out and <laughs> White Master Spree Forever. Appreciate you being here. Says, hey, hey to all three of you super cool dudes. Thank you so much. You are super cool yourself. Appreciate you being here tonight. My buddy here, Chad Nigga Ed. Been a member for 21 months, buddy. Uh saying hi guys with his member chat. Thank you for yep. that, Ed. Uh oh. I mean you had some issues with your phone. Yeah. Um I uh I'm switching over from phone to phone, but I I didn't ever get tested, but I think I had the cron last week. And so I couldn't get to the well, I could have got to the store and been sick, but I didn't want to do that. So I still haven't been to the store to get the chips moved, but I've been able to uh change passwords enough so I can make PayPal work. <laughs> Because <laughs> it it didn't want to work on my old phone because it would give notifications and say the wrong phone is doing oh. the, the you know somebody else is making a purchase on the different phone. That's what was happening. So I was finally able to at least fix that. And I still haven't got one of my video games that I play to work. Clash oh. of Clans, I can't get the five dollar monthly thing. You can't get your battle bonus. pass. <gasps> oh no. I do. <laughs> well, we'll talk about that next hour. <laughs> <laughs> you you oh, have another question, James, that wasn't highlighted. I got it pulled up. You want me to read it? Uh, this one from the man. Yes. I see that. I, I was holding on that one while Ed was telling us about his games there. <laughs> well, and I, I'm, I'm glad. No, you're fine. I'm glad you're able to get your phone situation figured out. Appreciate you uh, re-upping your membership and getting that back in there. Uh, the man says, hey, I was looking for something low maintenance and already have a 20 gallon. So I was thinking of just doing a single female beta. If I did this, how often would I have to do water changes? As much as I enjoy hearing myself talk, Lefty, would you like to answer this one? Since I know you have done a lot of beta keeping. Well, I'm assuming since you're saying just a single beta female, you're just keeping the one fish in the 20 gallon. So if it's just a one fish in a 20 gallon, you're only going to be feeding it. A small amount you'd probably get away with you wouldn't probably have to do it once a week i would say every other week probably and if you've got other fish female? yeah if it's only a female i'd say every week if you got some schooling fish in there i'd still say do your once a week change just to be safe yeah i mean 
I'm not going to disagree with you at all. I, I think realistically, uh, in a 20 gallon, uh, especially depending upon filtration and if it's planted and all those things. I mean, if you had a, a moderately planted tank and you were just solely looking at levels in the tank, you might even be able to go a month without a water change, but it doesn't hurt yeah. to be in the habit of doing weekly water changes. Um, Especially if you do have plants. I found that even when I don't need to do a water change, my plants always enjoy a nice they water do. change to keep them, give them yeah. a little boost. You know, I wasn't doing water changes as much because of the of so having so many plants. But then I realized when I do my water changes, they really pearl. At least the mm. valve does. And so I'm, I'm still trying to do them every two weeks on, on all my tanks because it's so much fun to see those plants pearl up. Absolutely. Now, if... if you are specifically looking for something as low maintenance as possible, uh, the man. I would, of course, recommend testing your parameters as you kind of move into this project, if you will, um, and just kind of see how long you can go on your time letter. And you may be able to do, you know, a month without the, the levels even moving hardly at all and just do a minimum water change, especially if you're looking for something. I don't know, maybe you're out of town a lot. Um, so you're looking for something that can go a couple of weeks because you're out of town you know, two weeks at a time for work or something like that. We don't know the situation. Um, but my big thing would be to go ahead and, you know, get your tank set up and cycle and all of those good things. And then to just kind of do your water test and go, okay, uh, instead of just doing a water change this week, just because I'm going to test the water, see what it looks like. If all the parameters are within specs, you know, give it another week, test again and kind of, get the feel for your individual tank because a lot of the hobby is doing specifically that getting a feel for exactly what works for you and your tank um, and what goes along with your method or style of fish keeping all of those things within you know the parameters of keeping the fish after it happened but uh, i feel like 20 gallons one better you should be able to go quite some time uh, especially if it's a necessity for you to be able to do so uh, and still be able to enjoy fish keeping you know, I have one tank I never do any water changes on. It's a 75 that has two angels and one giant auto sinkless. So it has three fish in the whole tank. But And it's heavily planted. And I just uh, add two inches of water every two weeks instead of draining anything. And, I've got, and it's over-filtrated, too. It has a, yeah. a hang-off the back, a sponge, and a Zist wow. uh, filter on it the the bubble the zist mm -hmm. gosh what are they called the zist friction not fr freeze fusion filter you know it's got the little particles that bubble or, or bounce oh, around sure. well they're neat little things you're talking about the zist filters right yeah yeah with uh i don't know if they specific reactor k1 but the uh um... i think they're called reactor filters yeah, no, th those are neat filters. Um, uh, I've never used those particular ones. Uh, those styles of filter are fun to, big, lar to build large, um, almost sub-style systems with that reactor media. Uh, but they are definitely neat filters. Fish Tech Dad says, your poor voice, hope you're feeling better. Uh, I hopefully will be soon. It's been about five days of this, so uh, I think I'm, I'm mostly through the battle here. But thank you, Fish Tank Dad. Appreciate that very much. Rustic Nashville with the $20 Super Chat. Thank you so much, Rustic. Very much appreciate the support. It says, let's talk Aquaticon, y'all, with lots of hearts and peace emojis and little fishies swimming and all sorts of cool stuff. Woo Thank you so much for the support there. Yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to Aquaticon. For anybody that's not familiar, it is a one-day aquarium event here in Knoxville, Tennessee, April 30th of this year. Uh, super excited for that. Uh, the link is in the description for this video. Uh, live stream, uh, but I'm sure the mods have already probably dropped it in the chat as well. Tickets are on sale. Uh, booths are available for vendors. It's going to be it's over 16,000 square foot of floor space plus the speaking area. Lots of awesome people going to be attending that. If you have any particular questions, feel free to throw those in the chat or send me a message. I'd be happy to answer those, uh, but I, I'm definitely looking forward to it. We did, I think I mentioned this, but we did, um, excuse me, let me get my head back in the game here. Reef Nutrition uh, did join in as a, um, 
uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Platinum partner mm. on Aquaticom. So I thought that was very, very cool um, to have the national brand involved in that, uh, helping to spread the word as well. It's going to be a great time. Be lots of people there. We've got everything, you know, from your standard, if you will, uh, booths and things that you would expect at uh, an aquatic show, trade show. Uh, but then we've also got like our kids corner raffles and of course the YouTuber section where you can come out and meet your favorite YouTubers and me too. Um, <laughs> so it's going to be a really fun time. Again, thank you for the super chat, Rustic Nashville. I'm looking forward to seeing you there. Uh, the band said, oh, there we go. I see where he, uh, I'm assuming he since it's the band, but you never know. Um, ask the question with the fish room fever attached to it again, but we got that. I appreciate you asking it again with that on there. Try and catch them even if that's not on it, but if you put that at symbol in the name, it definitely helps. Yes. Abby Greenaway, good to see you. Says, do you guys have good tips and saltwater tank for starters, and what are good fish to start with in a saltwater tank? So, without, how do I do this about sounding promotional? Um, <laughs> I would recommend that you go back and you check out the simple saltwater series that we have going on the channel. And the reason I say that is because we've got a lot of information broken down to its simplest form. Um, and we spent a lot of time talking on several different subjects. So like one week we talked just about tank sizes, spent an hour talking tank sizes. We spent an hour just talking about water. Uh, we, we really broke it down and spent a lot of time on the basics. That way we can get really in depth with it. And it's not something that I can quick cover in uh, a couple minute answer on here. Um, they really give you the same detailed information. Uh, so I would recommend you check that out. If you get some time, maybe throw those on uh, while you're doing other things. Just listen to them. We try and set everything up so you don't have to actually watch and you can listen to these things while you've got other stuff going. Uh, but that being said, uh, some, some good fish we've recommended before um, are things like the um, the cardinals are really pretty fish. Of course, you know all this keeping in mind that saltwater, you really have to take the additional time when you first set it up to get a good, um, we'll just say cycle, even though it, it really is more of a season tank. But to make sure you've got a really good cycle in your saltwater setup. Um, Promise or another one that you see a lot of people go to. But really, I often, um, nowadays, I'll recommend getting some macro algae in there um, just to get some sort of biodiversity going before you even get fish in there. Because you really do want to give it a good bit of time before you get fish. And it's nice to have something in there that's, that's growing and doing things and, you know, for you to look at. So you've got some type of subject to to look at while you're checking out your tank because it does take a while to get them properly cycled on the saltwater side um, established is really what we're looking for here uh, but once you've gotten into that there's some, some starter fish like that uh you're almost with salt water i feel like you're almost better to wait until you get exactly what you want if you know what you want versus doing the, uh, what we do, I guess a lot of times in freshwater, people are like, well, I'm just going to throw some guppies in there for now, and then I'll pull those <laughs> out and I'll put in what I want to later. Uh, yeah. I'm going to throw a goldfish in there until I figure out what I'm doing with it. Uh, I try to avoid that approach in general, but especially on salt water. Um, whereas, you know, if I've got empty tanks, I'll throw guppies or whatever in them just to keep it going. Uh, but in salt water, I would really say while you're taking the time to let your tank get well seasoned and established spend that time doing research to find out what you really want to do with it hopefully you've got some sort of guidance on that already just due to the fact of size variances um, being so much more drastic i think in salt water it's a lot easier to accidentally get a really big fish in salt water um, than it even is in fresh water now that i've ranted gentlemen would you like to add to that <laughs> well i am a complete beginner into it <laughs> Uh, I have everything but the RO system at that at this point. So I don't have the live sand or the water in the tank. But I've got the heater. I've got the water flow set up. So it's going to have water flow. I've got the light. So it's going to grow coral. 
Um, so I've got a lot of the, the basics. I know one thing that they told me, uh, what it was the expert guy, Mike Howe, he was saying go big because I was planning on doing a 20 tall and I do have a 50 t uh, pillar tank. So I decided I'm going to go with a, a 50 pillar type tank. You know, it's just up and down tank. And that's what I'm going to be doing. And I'm going to do mostly corals, but I plan on doing like one or two shrimp and just two clowns. And I already picked out my clowns. I'm going to go with uh, gold, red clowns. Ooh. There's like, or a marine gold, like maroon, marine gold, but they also have like a red gold and it looks just like my Kansas City Chiefs. So I'm going to get two of those guys in there. Nice. I think it's so, going to be awesome. Little known fact, I actually kept a saltwater tank at one point. Oh, wow. Didn't know that. Uh, but I we went when we kept ours, we went a native fish route. So we started it from scratch, then we went to the local shore and we got you know seashells and stuff from I think they were slipper snails, put those in the tank to help start a cycle from bacteria in you know the sound where we we're gonna get the fish from. And then after about I think two and a half or three months, we went back with a long siphon net, went out and actually collected species from our local local waterways. So if you're near the ocean, that's always an option as well and those fish might be slightly easier maintenance wise than your you know your more fancy saltwater fish would did you have yeah. to worry about temperature changes or how did that work because you you don't hear a lot about cold water uh ocean fish i mean there's a lot of people that do it you have to buy a chiller and stuff but i imagine yours are probably going to be kind of the lukewarm because <laughs> you're not severely north but you're kind of in the middle yeah, I don't remember us. It was almost like a regular, you know, freshwater tropical aquarium temps. I don't think we had to push the heat because Long Island Sound rarely gets anything higher than like the high 70s, low 80s water temp wise. And then it's down in like the 50s for the winter. Yeah. So the fish were we and we kept them in a classroom. So they were already at like a higher temp from that. So I don't, I don't even think we had heaters in some of the tanks. Wow. Yeah, I, I, I imagine that. You live in such a great spot. That's pretty neat. I wonder what those, uh, what they look like, the fish. We had silver sides, which almost looked like a elongated tetra almost, like a just a regular run of the mill. We had, actually, we caught a flounder. Someone caught a baby flounder one time. Very nice. <clears throat> we had something that looked like a rope fish, but for the life of me, I can't remember what they were called. Cool. Oh. It was just a skinny, like snake-looking fish with like a like a flute for a nose, and then we had um, we had we had a couple different kind of crabs, and that was about all we all we had. Uh, we used ovalactuca, which is sea lettuce, one of the seaweeds we have around here. I have to say, if I were back around the ocean again, I would definitely be a lot more involved in doing that type of stuff. I really uh, miss having the ocean here. Like that. It's definitely a fun thing to do. I, uh, not to change the subject, but kind of keeping it on the collecting side, the mollies that James and I and Kenny E and Father Fish collected, uh, like it's been over a year now. Yeah. Um, I've moved them from the 20 long to a 55. It's actually Nathan's 55, Sand Creek Aquatics okay. 55. Um, they're extremely difficult to keep in the 20 gallon because as soon as one died if i didn't pull it right and didn't see it right away the ammonia spike would happen and i would have a die off every time and it was like just getting on my last nerve and it was on the top shelf so i've moved it so i can see everything in the tank have a much bigger tank so that way i you know it'll disperse you know i think a lot of uh just everything, you know, just to be able to have them. And I've got them completely winged off of salt. Because awesome. when, uh, good, that the day that we got those, it was actually James and Kenny went down and we, they were pulled out of the natural springs that were, uh, mineral springs. They're natural yeah. mineral springs. People swear by it that it's like life juvenating. And it's really bizarre because there were lots of Russian people vacationing because they would sit in these 
pools made from the same stream water that these mollies were living in. And, well, we put them in normal water. Well, at first, James and I and Kenny, we didn't even know that we were keeping the fish. <laughs> we thought we were catching them for Father Fish's store. But, uh, no, we were keeping the fish. So uh, I immediately gave them a lot of salt and got the last, like, 10. So I bet you we had a 90% loss. It was pretty yeah, heartbreaking. But uh, I got the last 8 to 10 living and breeding, and I was always just winging them off slowly and slowly to just straight fresh water. And now they're 100% fresh water. So that's that also is going to help them live longer too and i put them in a planted tank i had them with guppy grass because my guppy grass can handle the salt water easier than the planted tank that has dirt and all that in it so yeah i just think everything will be just 100 times better now i'm glad to hear that those were definitely sensitive fish i'm going to dive back into the chat here because we're getting way behind schedule uh trexy says so i've had uh six excuse me so I've had six pygmy corridors in my 10 gallon for about a month now and haven't seen any breeding activity. How long does it normally take for them to start laying eggs? Mm. So there are a lot of variables. Um, assuming that you have, you know, fully matured specimens and that you have males and females in there, um, the two things that come to mind the most in order to get some breeding are going to be them being comfortable and um, food. So making sure that they're settled in. Um, in the words of a, a master breeder, uh, sometimes it just takes however long it takes and you don't really know. Um, that, that advice was given me when asking about breeding some plecos. Well, just got to let them get comfortable. And sometimes that might take 12 months for them to get comfortable. And if you go in there and you move the tank around, that might throw them off for another 12 months. Uh, that being said, what you could try and do, uh, I've always found that adding some meaty foods to the diet. I do like the uh, Hakari frozen brine. You could also do live baby brine. Uh, get some proteins in there to help with uh, the creation of eggs, if you will. Excuse me, my vocabulary is down while my brain is not functioning properly. <laughs> Um, but get some meaty foods in there to help with egg development. And then, yeah, I have seen benefits personally of doing the cold water changes. I know there's a lot of back and forth regarding doing a cold water change, whether it actually triggers breeding or not. And it varies different species of fish, but it doesn't hurt to try it. Um, so I would say definitely get some meaty diets in there, get them uh, where they've got plenty of foods to be able to develop eggs properly we'll do that for a couple weeks and then try doing a cold water change on your next water change see how that works for you that would be what i would try if i were in your situation but a month is really i mean yeah it, it could happen in a month i mean i've had say like you know bristle dust plecos bring them in and within three days of having a male and a female in a tank oh i've got eggs but there are also sometimes you get fish together and it takes three months six months a year uh, before they get comfortable enough to breed, or uh, never. Yeah, or never. Yeah. <laughs> That's that definitely is a possibility. Um, with Corys, uh, I would say uh, don't don't think you're doing something wrong just because it's been a month and you haven't seen breeding activity. I, I guess I should start with that, uh, and then to add on that. Try those tips, and then, gentlemen, whatever else you might suggest. Uh, yeah. Everything James said. Well, <laughs> I have never bred the pygmies. The only person that I really know that has is Sean Peck, and he wasn't trying. So he wasn't adding any rainwater or anything. That's what my dad used to breed Corridoras and sell them in the 70s, and he would collect rainwater and bring it in. But uh, Sean wasn't even trying to breed the Corys and did. The one thing that his tanks have is a lot of plant cover because – I think those guys are kind of like an egg scatterer. They don't like look for a spot to drop their eggs. So they need to be hidden from other guys or other fish from, you know, to see if they would eat them or not. So that would be, I think, the one thing also is make sure the other fish aren't eating them. Yeah, absolutely. And you can't even get um, 
the parents eating the eggs sometimes or other members of that group. Uh, I have seen that happen, especially a lot of times. I don't know 100% with the pygmies, but I know with other varieties of quarries, they like to spawn soup early in the morning. At least mine always have. Uh, so they might spawn at 4 o'clock in the morning, and then by the time you get up at 7 o'clock, the eggs have been eaten. Uh, I know that that has happened before. So another thing to keep an eye out for is, you know, they could possibly be laying eggs and the eggs be getting eaten before you get a chance to check it out. The Zen Ginger says, I sound like death. My <laughs> You're going to make it, question mark. Or did you just wake up or something? <laughs> LOL, but you look great, so that's all that matters. <laughs> well, thank you, Zen. I appreciate that. My apologies. My apologies. Leslie says, John and Lisa sent me here. I just subscribed. Now impress me. LOL. <laughs> oh, Sorry, this is the wrong <laughs> <impression>. <laughs> now, I am doing my very best, but the Lord knows I'm trying here. Sarah J. Seaver says, we have two Pegasus cats. We are ready to rehome. They ate at least 15 of our small fish. Something they didn't tell mom when they sold them to her. Ooh. Yeah. Um, I mean, keep in mind, catfish, generally speaking, are scavengers. Um, and they will uh, look for food sources. Even when they're getting well fed, you know, they will look for that opportunity to scavenge whatever food they can. Sometimes that comes in the form of small fish that are in the tank. Especially when you've got, you know, a catfish and a nocturnal fish, typically. Uh, and then you have little baby fish in there, or smaller fish anyways, but that are quote-unquote sleeping at night. So that catfish comes along, and your other fish are just kind of floating and sleeping, and they're gone, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, she lost a dozen-plus fish, but suck. definitely something for anybody to keep in mind if you're getting essentially any type of catfish. Um, and that can even extend to, you know, some of your Pocostomus. Those aren't armored catfish. They mm -hmm. just scavenge. Um, so it's not unheard of for them to get a hold of something that's maybe hanging out on the bottom at night while that pleco is roaming around looking for food. Um, or even a wide fish like goldfish. Sometimes you'll get a pleco that gets a taste for the slime coat. Uh, and then I have seen where people have had issues. But once that pleco got a taste for that goldfish's slime coat, all it wanted to do was suck on that goldfish. So you never know. Crazy things happen. Um, yeah, it sounds like it's definitely time to rehome those, Sarah. And sorry about the fishy losses. Well, unless she's already lost all the fish, and then there's no point to restock her tank. Carol Cox, thank you for the five dollars super chat. Very much appreciate that. So it's hoping for a saltwater chat soon. Yes, we did one with Mike a couple weeks ago with Fish Tank Barn. Um, we should hopefully have one this month, and we're looking to get back into doing one every single month. Uh, doing the Saturday Simple Saltwater live streams. Uh, very much enjoyed that. Things got crazy toward the end of the year for all of us trying to get a schedule together. But you should be seeing one a month going forward on those. Thank you for the Super Chat, Carol. And thank you for being here. UPS are living the dream with $10 Super Chat. Thank you, UPS. -er. Again, uh, also re-upped your membership last night. Welcome back to the family. Uh, says, well, was on house arrest for five days for testing positive for COVID slash COVID last week. So no delivering packages for me again until Saturday. Well, I mean, at least you're getting to avoid some of this crazy weather. Um, the snow in the middle of the day has been interesting. We don't typically get a whole lot of snow around here. So that's that's been something. You look outside and you see snow at you know, noon. It's a little bit different for us here. I'm going to ask about the snow. I saw that Aquatic Marine posted they were closing early because of it. Yeah, it's it's been interesting. Usually if we do get it, it's at night while the sun is down. Um so it was, it was weird. Uh, little boy opened the door to, to walk the dog and I looked out where it was snow and I was like, okay, that's different. <laughs> uh, but thank you again, UPS. I hope you get to feeling better. Um, and hopefully the roads will be nice and safe when you do get back to work. Let me go through here. Chat jumped on me. I'm sure I missed some stuff. Hey, Crystal's pet some plants saying hi. Crystal. Here. I saw you. I saw you in there. Get back up here. We're we gonna... need to eat some more pizza with Crystal. <laughs> we Absolutely. do. I uh, I pulled some questions. If you want to take a break from all the reading, there, James. Go right ahead. Go right uh, ahead. There was one before the person left. Uh, they said, "How would I treat a beta with a bacterial infection?" Mm -hmm. uh, so, I've been seeing a lot online now that people do, you sh say you not to use the Melifix and Pemifix with the labyrinth organ fish 
because it can damage that organ. Oh. Now, I've used that for you know, goodness 20 years now to treat all fish, <laughs> and I've never seen it affect them. But because of that, I'm going to say maybe you can try that, um, or just you know your Marison would be good for that. If you don't have either of the, any of those, raise the temp in the tank and put a little salt and catapa leaves in there if you want to go try a natural route. It'd be the only it, thing I could think of that might work. A lot of people may not know what the labyrinth lung fish are. Do you want to say so your beta of fish, your garamis, any your, 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 anab fish. your anabantoids? Yep, and your rope fish and your your lung fish and your bishers or bikers or bashir, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> but, yeah, they. So there's actually quite a few fish out there that have lungs, which mm. is pretty neat. But uh, that'd be a bummer to damage that. Yeah. Another person said, "Can I put a red tail shark in a 29 gallon tank?" Uh, that's yeah, that's the black bodied fish with the red tips. Red yeah. Yeah. Um, um, similar to the rainbow shark. I yeah. I'm gonna say no to that one personally. I mean, so, so technically, you could. I wouldn't recommend it, um, especially because you're gonna want some other fish in there with it. Um, and I'm gonna say it's probably not going to be the best or most enjoyable tank or most enjoyable life for that particular fish. Um, could you get by with it? Yeah, probably. Would I recommend it? Not so much. Yeah, but McKiz, thank you for that question about the, the betas. I did just see that. Let me see Aquatic says, I got plants today. They look good, except for one S Rappens. Uh, roots look good. Think it will come back. Lost all its leaves. So anytime I've got something that's still got roots, even if the leaves die off, I will replant it. Yep. Uh, worst case scenario, the roots die off of the substrate, and it's not going to do typically a whole lot of damage to your water chemistry there. But most of the time, if you've got a healthy root system, you'll get some growth. You'll get new growth on it, and that plant will spring back. Um, so, yeah, I would definitely shove those roots down in some substrate there, MSC Aquatics, and in theory, should come back. Killer Kitty 08 with $4 super sticker. I don't think I've seen that one before. That's super cute. It's like a cute little fox with a bone with a yellow bow on it or a golden sparkly bow. That is super cute. Thank you so much for that, Killer Kitty. Always appreciate the support. Uh, very neat. Very neat super sticker there. I'm going to try and get caught up here. I know we've got a lot of stuff. Little bit Tavares with $2 super chat. Very much appreciate the support. Thank you for that. Says, I feel hot and achy daydreaming of getting my eighth tank. Did I catch the fish room fever? P.S. Oh. Love Clash of Clans. <laughs> I got worried like... at first. I thought you got the corona. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah. Now that sounds like you caught the fish room fever a little bit. Thank you so much for the super chat and congrats on catching the fever. Catching the right kind of fever there. You know. Um, I wonder if people would ask you for stickers right now and you would lick the envelopes if they would when they receive it if they would lick it if they would really get well well there are a couple a answers i'll give to that very quickly uh, for one i get the self-sealing envelope specifically so i'm not licking people's envelopes nope. um, well, maybe you could sneeze sick. on your stickers uh, well, yeah, the, the other part of that being if I do have to ship something while I'm sick, I always sanitize everything. So I, like, I had to ship out the fish food uh, to last week's winter. Um, and I made sure that I was, you know, clean and sanitized, getting that packed up to go out. Um, so we try to only spread the fish room fever. Right. We are spreading the fever around here. Guys, when I send <laughs> stickers, I just drop them in the thing. <laughs> so I'm not see. nearly as thorough. Sarah J. Seaver said, uh, I know I'm behind on chat, but I did get my VIP tickets. So excited, Fish Room Feeder. That was in reference to Aquatic Con. Sarah, I'm excited. I'm looking forward to getting to see you again. It's going to be an awesome time this April here in Knoxville, mm -hmm. Tennessee. Come to Aquatic Con and get your aquatic on. Uh, that was from Diego who came up with that saying that I had to, to borrow from him. Kit Kat says, hello, you guys. Uh, how many neon tetras can I have in a 20-gallon high with a female betta? I would probably do 20 high dimensions. I'd do a dozen in there. I mean, I feel like for me, a dozen and a female beta is kind of going to be perfect. Of course, I'm also like envisioning, if you will, 
a really well planted tank with some rock and some driftwood um, versus empty space. But that's that's just me personally. What about you, gentlemen? Ed, do you want to go first? No, because I <laughs> typed something to whip and I didn't pay attention. And then I, I'm thinking about two things: what Whip said, and then I was thinking my stupid cat's not sitting in the thing I made him. Oh, bless his All right. All right. Um, I would have said anywhere from about just about twelve to fifteen myself. So there you go. Oh my All gosh, right. you didn't help me with what's the question? How many neon tetras in a twenty tall with a female beta? Oh. I would get a dozen. There you go. There you go. Twelve. <laughs> <laughs> I have six in a fifteen. Well, I have six black neon tetras <clears throat> in a fifteen with my beta. So that way he has something to chase. And there was a there was a guppy angelfish question. Ed, you want to take that one? It said, Can you put guppies with angelfish? I would not, because oh, angelfish. I was yes. thinking goldfish. Uh well, we kind of had this question last week. Uh, angelfish will eat a lot of the fry. And, you know, they don't look like they're fast, but they can really dart. And we were also talking that if you have big, slow boy guppies in there, they're probably going to eat them. So I would go with something like an inler or a short-tailed guppy if you go with a guppy. So that way it's a little quicker, but you're still going to lose some of your boys because they're not very smart. Absolutely agree with okay. that 100% there. Uh, Pegasus Arena using her member chat there. She's been a member for 13 months. Thank you, Maria. Very much appreciate you. I hope you and the family are doing well. It says, hi, my friends. I'm late, but here and 13 months in. Very awesome. much appreciate it. Fish Tank Dad says, any of you three have a Fluval Flex 15 gallon? If so, what do you think? So I don't have one, but I will say our buddy Sean Peck, Peck Tech, is kind of like the king of the Fluval Flex, if you will. Mm-hmm. And I love his tanks. Absolutely love his tanks. Oh, I, uh, I think the Fluval Flex is an awesome tank. Um, I, I'll let you gentlemen talk for since I, I even with the cold, well, still over talking you all. I think it's an amazing <laughs> tank. If you go to James's uh, fish store in Knoxville, uh, Aquatic Marine, if you come to Aquaticon, you got to go to Aquatic Marine. They have a wall of them. I think they have like 20 of them or something. It's crazy. And it's really cool to see that many. Uh, I wish they were that affordable that I could have a wall of them because it'd be so <laughs> cool. Um, I've got the the 32 Megaflex behind me. The biggest drawbacks that I hear is getting the algae off the front. But they do have a Megfloat sells now a round one mm-hmm. um, that's real small and it goes up and down real easy. And we'll clean the front of your bow front tanks off. So that really helps a lot. So that, that's about the biggest thing, I think, is the, the problem with the bow front analogy. Yeah. Were you going to say anything, Lefty? I'm sorry, buddy. I have never kept fluval flexes, so I'm going to bow out of that one. All righty. But no, um, I would say if you're looking at one, uh, I definitely recommend them. Uh, go check out Peck Tank. He's got a bunch of... Uh, Flexes. He's got unboxing videos, and you can see some really well-established flex tanks on his channel. I love the built-in filter too. I mean, mine's not even filled yet. Sean Peck Tech is going to come and eventually fill this. Um, like, well, I mentioned just briefly that I set this up so Nico could hide here or sleep here, and then I could have the fish tank diver bell. But Nico likes being on the top. So I think we're going to try to swap it around, and uh, maybe I'll be having some tanks filled next week. It'd be pretty yep, exciting. That'd be cool. Then you got the helmet and frame too. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Absolutely. Uh, Wait, Master Spree Forever says, "Do you all have a favorite substrate for planted tanks? I have all cichlids plus one common flecker in my 125 gallon, so I want uh, want to try that as my first planted tank." Um, or excuse me, so I won't try that as my first point of tank. 45 gallon hex will be. Uh, I'm a huge fan of the dirted tanks with the sand cap on them. Uh, that being said, I've got plants in almost all of my tanks and substrates range from, again, the dirted with the sand cap to just gravel tank. Uh, I've got some sand gravel mixes. 
I've got some things like the fluval stratum and different plant specific substrates, but I really do think I've seen the best results out of the sand cap dirty tank. Uh, but you can you can do it in just about any substrate. On to you, gentlemen. That is my, my favorite is also the sand cap. Not only is it affordable, but it works great. Uh, when you're pulling plants out, you go slow. The sand will fall back into the hole. You're not going to get the mud uh, mud into your water column as much. You might get some because it'll stick to the, the roots as you pull it out. But uh, I love that. But the other stuff that works really good is the Eco Complete for me. Uh, who makes that? The, is it... Uh, I'm, I'm thinking it's an S. Uh, Eco Complete. Gosh. I've lost it. I've lost it. Care of Care of What was that? Care of C? Yeah, as it looks like from Google. Okay, well, and that's Sean Peck likes it. I've used it on a few of my tanks, and I've had no problem growing plants in that stuff, also. It's kind of like little clay rocks and it comes in different colors uh from black to brown and all the shades in between and i've had no problem with any of my plants in those tanks also but uh yeah other than that i i i just don't like gra i used to use gravel all the time and now i don't use it at all it just the sand cap is just so easy absolutely I'll give you one guess as to what my answer is. It is also dirt with a sand cap. <laughs> oh. But like James, I've grown things in multiple substrate. I've got just sand bottoms. I've got just gravel. I've got the river rock. But my favorite is definitely the uh, one inch of dirt with two inches of sand cap on top. Yeah. Plants seem to do really well on that as well. Definitely. Yeah, and depending upon what substrate you go with, uh, there are things, of course, like you know, root tabs or easy green and different fertilizer choices. Mm -hmm. um, you know, technically, depending upon your plants, you could do a, a no substrate planted tank. If you've got True. rhizome plants, floating plants, mosses, things of that nature. Done that as well. So it all depends on if you've got a wall, water column feeder, waller column, <laughs> water <laughs> column feeder, um, in what direction you want to go with it. All righty. Let me see here. Chris Robertson says, a sacrificial feeder goldfish are my first freshwater fish in most tanks unless I have cycled media available on purpose purposes, because of their waste output and hardiness yes um, i have done that route before i know a lot of people have the fish in cycling method uh usually with feeder goldfish uh, because they are hardy and they do uh, a decent amount of waste output um you know i'm not gonna i'm not gonna bash you for it that's it definitely does work um, there are many different ways to cycle a tank uh, mm -hmm. That's one that's been done for quite some time that particular way. Yeah, definitely. You used to be able to get three mollies for $2 in the 80s. And that was my go-to was to put three mollies in a tank. And uh, because the bad thing about the goldfish is they get so big and you have to have a place for them when you're done. Because I don't want to keep goldfish in my, my uh, tanks when you do the fish. Mm -hmm you know but yeah startups so all of my tanks but one have been fishing cycles because that's how i learned to do it years ago so i've done it with tetras quarry cats beta fish guppies mollies rasboras the only tank i did not do it with because of the cost of the fish was the african and buna tank i didn't want to risk a fishing cycle with them just to be on the safe side because of how much those fish cost and now with sponge filters so available, it's so strange because for decades, fish stores have been using sponge filters, but they didn't sell them. Mm. And now that they're finally available to the general public, it, they are such a nice tool for starting new tanks because you can just take an old grungy sponge filter and put it in your new tank. And there are stores that will sell you cycled sponge filters too. That's a really good store that does that. Absolutely. Uh, I, I lost a question here. It wasn't highlighted, uh, but just to paraphrase it, Sarah had mentioned uh, her, the bottom of her plants yellowing out, uh, being new to plants. Um, just like Merdul had answered to you, Sarah, 
Uh, sounds like time for a trimming and replanting. Uh, what does happen oftentimes is the top parts of your plant will shade out the bottom and that can cause some of the issues you're experiencing there. So again, uh, if it's something that, you know, like that wasn't a highlighted question or something that we miss, maybe something that we don't have an answer to, because that does happen. We're not experts. We never claim to be. We just share our experiences um, of years in, in the hobby. Uh, the chat is always a very viable source for information. That's what I was getting to and what I would encourage anybody to also be on the lookout for good answers from the chat as well, especially from our moderators. People like Paul Sotero, who I saw mentioned that his quarries do spawn uh, when he does cool water changes. Hey there, Lisa, New Jersey and, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, T-Bones Fishies. Good day. Appreciate you being here. I'm going to get caught up real quick as we're running toward the end of the show. You know, just as pets and plants, how's it going? Sorry, go Chris ahead. Chris Robertson says that he uses those goldfish that he starts his tank up with as fish bait. And that's a, oh. a great idea if you don't mind doing it. <laughs> I would have a hard time putting a hook through the little jaw of my, you know, fish <laughs> that I uh, have been looking at for a couple of weeks. But I yeah. can wait to attach. But it, that's a great idea. That's a super great idea. Absolutely. That is a good idea. All right. Chat jumped on me. Let me get back up here. I know I missed that. I know I missed that. Let's see how far can you go? Hey, there was Crystal's Pets and Plants saying Happy New Year. All right. Rolling back down here. Uh, da -da -da. Pegasus Sisterina says, it might be moving soon. If I do, I'll have to reset tanks. And uh, Kai is curious if a 10 gallon is good for a smaller saltwater tank small community fish like me most i honestly and we talked about this more in depth on the tank episode of the simple salt water but i honestly don't recommend starting with the 10 gallon uh, just because especially if it's going to be one that the, the little one is tending to uh, it's so much easier to crash out the smaller tanks you could yeah. do it um, but for a first salt water tank i really recommend a little bit more water volume uh, that way you've got kind of that safety net in there, if you will. You've got a little bit more water to make, I don't want to say make more mistakes, but if you do make a mistake, you can handle it a lot more than a 10-gallon can. Yeah, saltwater, that would be considered a saltwater nano, small mm -hmm. tank. And I would only leave that for super skilled people. Like James has done saltwater for a long time, but I wouldn't even think he would want to mess with that. But maybe somebody like mike might but i don't even think he would want to work with it because it'd probably be too much of a headache for him mm -hmm. it's going to be probably somebody that just really loves skate tank scapes and wants to do a saltwater scape would be the only people i see doing a, a nano saltwater because of the difficulty yeah uh two months fishy has been a member for 15 months used to member chat there's happy 2022 james ed lefty hope it's mm -hmm. prosperous excuse me <clears throat> Try not to sneeze at you guys live <laughs> on the air. Hope it's prosperous. Thank you so much, T-Bone. Really do appreciate you. Appreciate the support. Hope you have a wonderful New Year as well. Jimmy P says, can you hold a free Aquaticon trip contest and let me win it? Um, I mean, the tickets go on sale starting at $18. So, you know, that, that wouldn't be a big thing to do. I think the problem that you're looking at, or not, I won't say problem you're looking at, but I think you're looking at the um, maybe the, the travel expense would be the only thing yeah tickets are, are fairly cheap and i'm i'm sure we'll probably be given a couple away here on the channel i'm not gonna gonna guarantee anything or spoil anything but i dare say as it gets closer you probably expect to see a giveaway somewhere in there all right roll on down here texas fish room been a member for 14 months saying ready for aquaticon absolutely texas fish room looking forward to seeing you again it's going to be so much fun it really really is looking forward to seeing you all in knoxville uh, April 30th. going to be a blast. Thank you for being a member as well, buddy. Lance Aquatics says, how important is substrate depth in planted tanks? Uh, notice my Amazon sword dying back while thriving in other tanks. So I will say I've noticed personally, especially with swords, they tend to get, in my experience, very large root systems, very large clumps of roots. Uh, so they don't, like say, like some of your uh, valves and things where they'll spread out, they'll shoot out runners and they'll kind of go across the tank with their network of roots. 
the swords I, I, i've seen you know massive clumps of roots that are all in one area so it can mm -hmm. be really hard to get enough nutrients to that root ball when it's all in that one spot uh, so that is probably what you're experiencing with the die off there uh, in terms of substrate depth that can help with being able to get some nutrients into the center of that root ball directly under that one thing you might try doing is getting some root tabs um, and maybe some that have to be aquascaping tweezers but something similar some tweezers where you can try and get some root tabs or a root tab directly under the plant and around that root system because i would dare say if i had to venture a guess it's probably got a substantial root ball down there and it's probably getting some nutrients from the perimeter but it's not really getting a lot in the center so having that additional depth of substrate will typically allow more underneath to get nutrients kind of more well-rounded to it but eventually you do still see once they get a massive root system that you're just not getting enough nutrients to the center of that root ball or root uh, system gentlemen thoughts questions comments concerns well i when you were saying that i was showing off my my root tabs because that's exactly everything you said i go 100 percent with you because the roots stay in a single spot so they're kind of easy you know uh single filtrated or not filter uh not filter what am i why, why is filter getting stuck in my brain uh fertilize plant to do centrally because they're they're all in one spot so i i think the fruit or the fruit tabs gosh the the tabs are just great for them absolutely Anything to add to that one, Lefty, before we move on here? I'm just taking a quick look around the room. I'll say I've not noticed a difference between a thinner level substrate than a thicker. I have ones that are like two and a half inches. I have some that are five inches thick of substrate. The plants seem to grow the same. I think what James said, it's probably not getting enough nutrients, so the root tabs would definitely help out with that. And, you know, also trimming it will invigorate new growth and things as well. Yeah, I've never trimmed one. I just let them go crazy. It's always good to give a little, little trim. When the leaves turn brown and fall off, I take them out. <laughs> there you go. So, Son of a quack says, probably sounds crazy, but can I fit a school of pygmy quarries, a couple platies, a couple honey grommies, and a school of uh, like small rummy nose and a planted 20 gallon? What should I take out? Quarries, a couple platies. Couple honey grombies, a school of small rubby nose. So, if you're going to do that, I'd say stop at six on the rummy nose, maybe eight max, but probably six with what you've got going on in there. Heavily planted to help keep your bio load offset. Uh, that is going to take away from some of your swimming, but your pygmies are going to be on the bottom, those pygmy quarries. A couple of platies is not going to do a whole lot of damage, if you will, to the bio load. Uh, you know, two honey grommies, again, not going to do a whole lot, and I don't see them being too destructive, if you will. Uh, it sounds like a lot, but when you actually think about it from the experienced fish keeper perspective and you picture it in the tank, I, I really don't feel like that's overstocked as crazy as it sounds in terms of what, what would be safe. Um, my only thought there is the rubby nose can get to a decent size, which is yeah. why I said I maybe would only do six, but I wouldn't do less than six. Uh, if you're going to do more than six, do eight, uh, just in my opinion. But uh, I think you could probably do it if you're wanting to do that and do it successfully. Again, I would go very heavily planted, and I would offset the stocking of that. So I would stock it with just the, the pygmies first, um, and then gradually add in okay you know next once i know that my bio load is settled in and my cycle is set for whatever fish i have in there now now i'm going to add my two honey grommies and then i'll give it a week or two and then i'm going to add you know i would do the platies last don't do them first <laughs> you're going to have a million of them yeah uh, so at least the other because the platies are going to be your biggest problem on explode you know yeah. exploding numbers so maybe if you have yep. all the others established, they might be able to keep some of the smaller platy babies uh, down. That's what I'm thinking is maybe that pair, or not necessarily pair, but those two honey grommies uh, might help keep in check the platy population. Yeah. Uh, but you just, just do well planted uh, to help keep the bio load check. 
uh, do your parameter testing weekly for sure on that until you make sure that everything's going to be fine. And just make sure that you've got uh, ample filtration to keep a cycle going and maintain a healthy environment in there. And I, I think you can get away with it. What about one mystery snail? And a partridge in a pear tree. <laughs> There you go. Add it. Ed says add one mystery snail. I'm not going to say I disagree with him. So there you go. You did, you did one mystery snail. Uh, Sergey Sieber says, "What would all of you suggest someone have as a go, as a go kit for going to Aquaticon or other places for long distance transportation of live goods? Uh, necessities that aren't always thought of." So. One of the many reasons I love Prime, uh, aside from the fact that I can get a big bottle and it doses several thousand gallons because uh, it's, you know, one ml per 10 gallons uh, for treating water. Uh, I actually carry a little glass vial. He does. Prime with me uh, in my luggage and it can treat several hundred gallons. Um, I think it's 260 gallons worth of water conditioning that I can do with that. And it looks like holy water. Yeah, it looks like it's, it's my holy water. And I set it there next to the motel Bible on the, the nightstand, so <laughs> no messes with it. Um, I carry that with me when we go to fish shows. And I actually take my heat sealer. I was looking to see if I had it handy. I don't. My heat sealer and my breather bags now. That way, if I do have things I want to transport back, I can simply package them with breather bags. Uh, did that with Bobby T and Aqua. We rebagged some fish into breather bags at the last Aqua Shallow we went to with him. Um, for transport back. So those are some things that I take. I mean, I think we've done an hour segment on this before, uh, <laughs> but just to, to break it down simply, some sort of portable air pump might be good if you're looking at getting bigger fish that maybe you're, you don't want to do into breather bags. Um, you know, like coolers. That. Yeah, coolers, the coolers. aquarium co op, uh, USB air pump is a great one, and then portable batteries that I, of course, also don't have on hand. We've used five-gallon like buckets. Yep. Yep. We've done five-gallon buckets. you drive and buckets. have the room, one of those uh, storage totes. Mm -hmm. And I'll Absolutely. see your prime and raise you some API Aqua Essential. I, I, I like the API products. My problem was when I got up to almost 100 tanks, uh, it's so easy to burn through a bottle of that stuff. Well, this is the more concentrated stuff. Okay. okay. So this, gotcha. this is about a four-ounce bottle. It says it treats up to 1,180 gallons. Okay. With just one bottle. So this is their more heavily concentrated version of their dechlorinator. Yeah, I, I can't do the one ml per gallon. Yeah, that that gets a little pricey when you got you know more than two or three tanks. Absolutely. <laughs> but I love the lids. Yeah. Those are the kick. All right, I almost said a bad word. The best lids out on the market. <laughs> I the did coolest. keep all of my lids off of my bottles. All righty here. Uh, but yeah, those would be a couple things, Sarah. And of course, you're, you're free to message me if you want like an in-depth list. Um, you've, you've got my messenger. It's fish room fever, so everybody's got it. Uh, but <laughs> I know you're not afraid to shoot me a message if you've got questions. Oh, and we can and definitely talk about that more on another street. Well, go ahead, Ed. James and I did learn one thing that we do bring now, nets. <laughs> when we went to their first aqua shell up, we never took nets because mm. wherever we went, the fish were always bagged or, you know, given to us. Well, uh, James was basically told those fish are just going to sit there in that tank and be dumped if nobody takes them. So he took them, but he had no net. So uh, he, it was a man scramble. And. <laughs> yeah. Well, he. I think he, find, he found a vendor that maybe gave him a net. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, okay. I did. Oh, I, I went and bought a net from a vendor. They were kind of <laughs> unpack their stuff and sell me one. It was actually the those glowfish that you see on the green oh. screen behind me there. Can you imagine pulling little glowfish out of a tank? <laughs> that would be terrible. I've caught many a guppy with my hands before. Uh, I've, I've caught I a lot of stuff with my hands. <laughs> we could have used a styrofoam cup. From plecos to piranhas, I, I'm all about hand catching. Well, you love catching piranhas with your fingers. I do, I do. Attempting. Chris, Rob <laughs> Attempting. Chris, Chris Robertson says, uh, fish room fever or anyone, uh, when breeding beta, do you have water flow between the male and female or when introducing them and keeping a barrier between them for a day or a plastic canvas as a barrier? So I've not done any breeding personally, but I've, I've seen a lot of it done. 
I'm not a fish breeder, but I play one in real life. Um, <laughs> I, I've seen a lot of people do it, and a lot of people who do claim to be experts, um, as I do not with anything. Uh, and usually there's not really water flow between the two. Uh, I, you could do that. I don't know that it would hurt, but a lot of times you see people floating the container um, when they're introducing. Lefty, I know you've done a lot of better things. What about you? Um, I would say reference. Uh, Dean did a video with Corey at the co-op, and he talked about how he's done it in the past, and it's the same thing. He puts the, puts the, I think he put the female in its own jar and let the male see the female first, and then after a while he pulled the jar up slowly and let the, you know, let them do their thing. And I think he said if within the first like, well, I might, I can't remember the number. It might have been twelve or it might have been eighteen. If they don't get it on within that span of time, switch your pair. There you go. But that would reference if, that video definitely. If Master Breeder Dean said it, I would go with that. But yeah, the, the floating the cup is typically what you see. I'm pretty <laughs> sure that Mains Tails Furs and Fins has a uh, yeah. a, a, a video of it with her uh, hers coupling and going. I believe you are correct, my friend. EJ's Fishies six, 76, <coughs> excuse me, said, uh, I've had success using Safety Zorb and charged it with liquid fertilizer just rinse very thoroughly that's interesting i've not heard of that before i will definitely have to check that out very cool i appreciate you sharing that um that's interesting uh like you said just very thoroughly rinse it uh but that is that is a neat idea and thank you for being a member the support okay fritz wallace welcome to the fish room fever family thank you for becoming a member looking forward to seeing you at aquaticon here in knoxville another local person good to see you buddy i hope you're doing well all right i know my chat just jumped on me run back up here we got a couple more minutes we're already over our time but i know ed is scheduled for 15 after so we're safe there <laughs> excuse me i see a lot of stuff we're getting a lot uh, of questions tonight that's awesome yeah Half the time when we leave an hour just for questions and we don't <laughs> put the main topic it's like no we're not going to ask y'all any questions so it's nice to actually get some questions tonight. Yeah, it's been pretty cool. It has. All right, there was Kane Fritz Wallace. Hi. Thanks for becoming a member. Ricky DeHoy has uh, been a member for three months since. Glad to see all three of you guys. Love you guys. Love you too, Ricky. Thanks for being a member using your member chat there. Appreciate you. Hope you're having a fantastic night. Baron Von Yenzer says, Lefty and Ed looking to replicate rolling grass covered hills in a new tank setup. Uh, any suggestions for easy ground covering plants? Your best thing is Monte Carlo because it's the easiest ground cover. Oh, I'm sorry. What I was I, I who was talking? <laughs> no, you're fine. Ed knew I was going to say Monte Carlo. Uh, oh, that's, that's my go-to. Oh, well, it's the one cover that you can do that you don't have to give it CO2. But you know, it's a super. It's well, not super easy, but it's your best carpeting plant. Okay, I'm a. I'm going to give an alternate answer. I'm going to say dwarf hair grass also would give you a nice rolling hill effect as well. Or if you want some maybe combine dwarf hair grass and some dwarf sage, that way you have a little different height difference and some different texture looking thing in there as well. Those are my two go-to ground coverings that I don't use CO2 for, and they've done pretty well in my tanks. I'm going to go way outside the box here. Here's something I've done before. Uh, I've taken, we've talked about doing this before for making moss mats, taking the uh, plastic crafting grid, and attaching mosses to that. I've actually done that as a carpeting plant uh, in Escape or two before. Take Make that moss wall, and instead of using it as a wall, use it as a moss mat, use it as a, a carpeting that's, plant. That's what I do with your mats. But I don't trim them, and they look like bushes. Yeah, absolutely. So you, that would, But almost everything you do, you're going to have to be doing lots of lawn mowing <laughs> on it. So uh, if you want a pretty carpet, you got to mow it. Just there let me go. know. Uh, drink water. I'd, it disappeared on me, but had had a question about a pleco and driftwood. I try to keep driftwood in for all my plecos. Um, Manzanita is probably one of my go tos. I love Mopani. I do love Mopani, but it's a very, very hard wood. Um, I would try for pretty much anything you find out there except Mopani. Uh, in terms of plecos chewing on it, uh, will do well for you. 
Let's see here. Paul Stira says, uh, make it a 20 long for the Rominos, and it's all good. Yeah, yeah, 20 mm -hmm. long would definitely do well for that. The Romino set it before. Joseph Stanley says, you don't have to trim swords if you keep a uh, few plecos in with it. LOL. <laughs> yeah, uh, that'll definitely do the trick, usually. Uh, Killer Kitty wants to see the three of us in escape off. Ooh, ooh, that would be interesting. Maybe, uh, maybe April James. Maybe we, <laughs> we we might be able to make that happen. You know, we came close to uh, doing it at the the big fish deal. Were you thinking about going to that? Don't remind me. I'm so okay. mad I didn't go. <laughs> <laughs> but that I would love to do that. Um, I make the prizes for the aqua shell escape offs and i so wish i could escape <laughs> i just i would i would love to do it because it's fun but when you're kind of like one of the people that's not sponsoring it well like, no not sponsoring it but assisting with it you, you're not allowed to compete also oh well yeah no we, we've we've had some fun doing stuff like that before um so Hey, I, I, I'm up for it. It's always a good time, no matter what. So it's always fun, especially if it's hanging out with you guys doing it. So, yeah, James and I are one and one because oh. we did two yeah. that weekend. And uh, <laughs> yeah, that's I, right. I got the 15 gallon tank and he got the 10 gallon tank. Yeah. It's a good way to look at it. I like that, Ed. Uh, Paul Sotero says, I've got another panelist with a prop box. I certainly do. I certainly do. <laughs> I moved out my prop box because it kept kicking the darn thing. Yeah, Lefty and Ed with all the props there. I'm trying to scroll through here, grab anything super important here for the last couple of minutes. Uh, thank you, Craig. You mentioned Love to Tank. Very much appreciate that. Uh, uh, Klutz says, I'm thinking of doing a lidless tank with mollies. What can go with them that won't jump out? Um, so first, there's a potential for anything to jump out, especially if you get spooked. Uh, that being said, Ed... Mr. Molly guy, you've got a ton of mollies at your place. What would you recommend? Um, can you answer? I was reading a question about carpeting plants, uh, or a, a thing about carpeting plants. What was the Molly uh, question? A lidless Molly tank recommendation for something that's not going to jump a lot. Oh, yeah, my mollies don't jump. I have two different types of mollies, neither Molly. Oh my gosh, now my mollies are side by side <laughs> because I used to have the wild mollies in the fish room. And the domesticated guys in the other now they're going to be able to look at each other and make fun of each other. Hmm. What would you recommend to go with the mollies? Take okay. it for the mollies. Well, uh, my domesticated mollies have shrimp, quarry cats, coolie loach, lots of sword tails. It's a 120 gallon tank, so there's a lot of stuff in it. But I think I just said everything. <laughs> I did. That's what's in my. And none of them jump. I don't have lids on the either one of the tanks. Now, I will be having on the wild, but I've never had the wild ones jump, but I'm keeping them exclusive. I might put a, a bristle nose in with them. But other than that, nothing else is going to go in that tank except for them. Or maybe if I caught some other wild type fish that was a, a ground level fish mm -hmm. to help clean. But uh, yeah, I don't really... But yeah, there's a lot of great fish that don't jump. Oh yeah, and, just don't and, get hatchets. <laughs> yeah, jump. or, or your rainbows. Hatchets. Rainbows will jump too. Yeah. Oh yeah, oh. Uh, those yeah. are notorious for. I'll never forget the first time I had one of mine. I turned the light on to feed it, and it jumped out of the smallest itty bitty little hole in the lid, and I'm like, oh my gosh, what do I do? <laughs> well, the first time I ever got rainbows, I got really small ones. They were the Pacific Blue Eyes. They look like torpedoes, kind mm -hmm. of. They're really neat. And I got them from Dan's Fish. Beautiful. But I put them on this rimless oval tank that I have that's just beautiful. And I noticed that Baby Cat was just sitting next to that tank for like two weeks. And every time I looked at it, I thought, boy, they hide a lot. They were just jumping out, and she was eating them as they jumped oh. out. So, yeah. Uh, eventually, every single one of them jumped out of that rimless tank. And I'm not sure because tank sizes it mentioned, but, you know, like, Plecos, mentioned quarry cats, shrimp, uh, a lot of different things you could go with. I would look toward some of the bottom dwelling inhabitants to go in there. If you're really worried about stuff jumping, those typically tend to be the least likely to get jumping out. Now, a full-grown adult 
Corey cats, if you have the water too high, will jump out. Yeah. They, when they're chasing they, each other. We used to have really our can. breeders jump out quite a bit when I was a kid. All righty. We are at 1045 Eastern time here. Time for the Chattanooga Ed Crafted Show. Uh, I'm sorry if we did miss your question tonight. I know we had a couple things at the last minute here. My apologies. We try and get to each and every one of you. Appreciate you all being here. 114 people watching. Thank you so much for that. Thank you for hitting that like button. We appreciate it. As always, my buddy, pal, co-host, member of the Fish Room Retriever family of channels, Chattanooga Ed, thank you for being here with me. You want to tell them what we're headed over to on the Crafted channel? Yep. I'm going to be working on fish art. Uh, I have a fireplace that heats up way too much for like, I'm, I'm also a photographer and I put like some of my prints in front of it and it was causing them to ripple. So I'm going to be making some fish art to go above my fireplace. And I thought it'd be kind of fun to do it on the, the crafted show. We can also answer any fish questions. Uh, I think, I don't know how James feels. He might be there, may not be, but we're going to tell him if he's feeling sick, he can go to bed. Lefty's going to be there, and we're also going to have Kenny E. there. So uh, we'll have some uh, good fish talk and some crafts at the same time. Absolutely. Lefty 3213A, thank you for joining us tonight as the special guest. Very much appreciated. Like I mentioned before, if you haven't checked out Lefty, go check out his channel. Of course, we're headed over to Ed next. Link is in the chat. A huge thank you to all of you all for being here tonight. The moderators, the members, the lurkers, listeners, super chatters, contributors, questioners, commentators, and of course the replay crew. I love you guys. So next time, keep your fish healthy. Keep yourselves healthy. Don't be afraid to catch yourself a little fish room fever. Take care, everyone.